today we have a real treat because we get to hear from Leanne Thomas. Come on down, Leanne. If you know Leanne, she's affectionately called by many of us sis. She loves nicknames and she is a sister to so many. She is, she is just a gift to the body of Christ and to anybody that knows her. You've probably been greeted by sis at some point if you were here. And if you're new, you'll be greeted before long by Leanne. So I get to ask her a few questions today and I'm so excited to hear from you. Luke's gonna get you a microphone. Go ahead and have a seat. Leanne, Leanne, while we're waiting, while Luke's, why don't you just tell us how long you've been at Grace, maybe what brought you to Grace. Just give us a little backstory before we get into our, our questions. I'll just give you this mic. Like 15 minutes ago, I was telling Jeff Anderson out at the hospitality or at the desk, he asked me, and I said, when I moved here from Virginia in October of 2002, um, I didn't have a church. So for, from that first Sunday in October until the first Sunday in December, I would go around. I'm from Howe, so I would go around to churches down there in LaGrange County and interview them. And uh, I never... I, I knew, I knew that I just had to keep looking. And then by happenstance, I heard about this church here at Grace Christian Fellowship. So on the first Sunday in December, I came. The first family to walk in the door, because we didn't have the great room, was the Marcus family. Diane, of course, swooped me up in her arms, and she took me back to Ross's office, where some people gathered to pray for the service. And I was standing there, complete stranger, didn't know anybody. And a couple of the people started speaking in tongues. And uh, I start thinking, this might It didn't be. scare you away. It, and it did not scare me away. And then, of course, then the Marcuses, Yoders, the Marcuses used to sit there. <laughs> and anyway, I'm glad you're there now. Uh, anyway, we came up here to the front row, and the backdrop on the screen was mountains. And for 25 years, I looked at mountains in the Shenandoah Valley. And all the songs we sang that morning were songs we sang in Harrisonburg at Grace Covenant. And I just wept. I wept through the whole worship service because I knew I had found my home. I knew I had found my church body. What a great story. Yeah. For anybody that's yeah. been in that spot before looking for a, a church home, it's hard to find a church oh, home. Yes. You visited lots. Yes. I love how God just showed you that this was the home for you. I loved it more than you. <laughs> We're very happy about that. All right, so let's go to the questions well, I told you that I would ask you, yeah. and I'll try not to ask you too many extras. But the first question I would love to hear, Leanne, is what were the hard things that you faced in 2020? When you text me that, uh, like 10 days ago or whatever, it took me forever. And I thought, Lord, what is it? Why can't, it was like looking at a, a ball of yarn, tightly, tightly wound, and I could not find the end of that yarn. and. And then I felt like the Holy Spirit led me to the book, my sh bookshelf, and I pulled out this book, uh, The Road Back to You, and it talks about Enneagrams, you know, it talks about nine different kinds of personalities, and, and I, um, things like the enthusiast, ah, there's me with Sophie, um, I didn't even notice that. Um, uh, the, the, the picture on the screen is what she's referencing. <laughs> That's in Virginia. Oh. Um, but Sorry, all, we distracted but, you. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, I identify most closely with the um, peacemaker. So now I'm going to have to go to my notes, and I'm, forgive me for this, because peacemakers, we tend to wonder. You know, we can't stay on track too long. So when you, Amanda, ask me difficult things, I tried to say, what was that? Because as a peacemaker, I felt like for the, 11th, the past 11 months, I was going through my life more like a observer rather than a participant. You know, I'm, I'm single, no children, grandchildren. You know, it's just me and Andy the cat. And so um, I, I was just observed. And I was very, 
aware, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, very aware of what was happening outside my little home down and along the Pigeon River and how. Um, so I felt like a observer um, because I am a peacemaker. And as peacemakers, I think we tend to sit back and never fully engage in what's happening around us. Uh, we peacemakers, and I'm wondering if some of you might identify with me as I go through this, we peacemakers try to avoid conflict at all cost. Uh, we kind of are stingy with our answers, you know, when people ask us questions, because I would much rather be asking you uh, questions than... Not today. Yeah, than me answering. So uh, consequently, it took me a long time to think through uh, and process this question and, and try to find the end of the ball of yarn. And what I came up with, with was three things. Not being with my church family, uh, guilt, and then the divisiveness that uh, has occurred because of the pan pandemic. You know, last year at this time, I was in Arizona playing golf, playing pickleball, walking, socializing, having fun. I'd been there for a month, but I was very much looking forward to coming back and getting back into a routine, getting back with my church family, um, getting back to playing pickleball at the Doyle Center, having coffee, lunch with friends. But for all of us, that just abruptly stopped in, after I'd been home for like one week or something. So that was horrible. Um, In-person church stopped. I really, really missed my church family. I missed the hugs. I miss the smiles. I miss greeting people with gift. I miss the kids. I remember telling you, Amanda, one time that my earthly family can never replace my church family. There's just something for me as a single person about my, my church family, and, and I'm sure my age too, you know, like I'm a grandma. Um, as we got further into the lockdown, I started feeling, um, started feeling um, guilt, you know, I, I felt guilty because my life seemed so easy in the last 11 months. It really did. Life kind of, but I would get on Facebook and I would see um, people's disappointments and their losses. And so I would grieve by myself, I, but, but I felt guilty about that um, in a strange sort of way. I don't know if anybody can identify with that, but that's what I just felt guilty that I that I was having it so easy. I didn't have to uh, be juggling schedules to accommodate kids being stuck at home. Uh, since I'm retired, I didn't have to worry about being laid off at a job or worry about having to go to work where my health might be compromised. Uh, and I didn't have to worry or wonder how was I going to lead a church online. You know, I think that's huge. That's, that's huge. Okay. Next comes a really hard one for me. Um, the divisiveness that we've all fallen into the last 11 months is for a peacemaker, we want everybody to get along. Um, we don't, like I said before, we don't like the conflict. But I want to say I understand the conflict. I really do. Um, because in this book, you know, it talks about all of our personalities. And they're all good because God made us. You know, he made me a, per, um, a peacemaker. I bet he made you a perfectionist. <laughs> or, I'm and, not telling. <laughs> and enthusiast and a challenger and all the other nine in here. You know, it's who God made us. And so the divisiveness, um, I don't want to say I get angry at it, but it certainly is upsetting to me because um, I, I just want us to recognize how God made us and to have grace for each other coming from, you know, that angle or whatever. Um, so the other Sunday when Alex and Aaron were talking, the, the thing that stuck with me was when Alex said, we were a house divided. Yeah, I agree. You know, for a peacemaker, you don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm even thinking about it every single day. I think about Alex saying that. Now, I trust their marriage. I know they're, 
they're solid, they love each other, they have those beautiful little girls, it's a good family. That, but they were a house divided, and we're a house divided too. The nation is divided, uh, the church at large is divided, some friendships are divided, um, family members are divided, and that grieves me, and we all know that it grieves the Holy Spirit. Um, so that was hard. I think you, you hit on so many great things, especially the, the point you made about feeling guilty yes. for, not, for life not being that bad. And I wonder how many more in the room or watching online have had that experience as well. I've heard people say 2020 was a fantastic year for me, that they really had some good things. Well, then there's others that have gone through so many difficult things. And I never would have thought about guilt being a hard emotion that you would feel from having a year that wasn't necessarily that bad. And of course, the divisiveness we've all, everybody in this room and watching online has felt. So tell me, Leanne, in light of all of those tough things, what were some of the good things about 2020 for you? Yes, let's turn the corner. Peacemakers don't <laughs> We want, all want to turn that corner. We right? don't want to stay around this, uh, the negative things. Um, my faith by far was the most positive thing. What do people do without their faith? Uh, another thing, uh, being, and I'm not sure everybody will understand it, but I pray that one day they will. Being filled with the Holy Spirit was uh, so vital during the last 11 months. Being um, as a peacemaker, my heart would just get so full because we peacemakers really tuck things away. We stuff and stuff and stuff, and then something happens and we're kind of forced to open that compartment and look at it and uh, that's when the tongues would kick in <laughs> I don't think I have ever spoken more in tongues the last 11 months that I have in my entire life since he being filled with the Holy Spirit so my faith was um, certainly comforting uh, and encouraging when we started meeting at the park in Howe in the summer, you know, we started meeting, some of us started meeting in small groups, and that just felt so good to me to be able to be with, with my fellow Hoosiers down there, worshiping and uh, celebrating together and kind of sort of acting normal sitting around in our lawn chairs, you know, because the spirit was there and we were together and it was wonderful. So that was so encouraging. I loved that young people in this body of Christ were getting married. You know, life went on. Love made life go on. Uh, babies were being born. People were adopting. You know, life was going on. We were persevering. Um, golf in Indiana never quit. <laughs> so I played golf. Good old Indiana. <laughs> uh, so I played golf on a league, so every, every day I was doing something. If I wasn't golfing, um, I was mowing neighbor's yards or doing projects like that. I got a pandemic purchase of a 1987 red Jeep Wrangler, a uh, soft top. And so uh, I, I went, I ran up and down State Road 9 to the golf course in my red Jeep all summer long. Uh, I took a lot of rides in my Jeep that I named Joy. Uh, good name. Um, so uh, These are great. And then uh, I want to, it's important for me, and I, I think I speak for, for this whole congregation. Um, during the lockdown, uh, I would watch Paul and Priscilla read online on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You know, our friends over in Northern Ireland, friends of the church would, would give their little YouTubes, and that was encouraging. But then when you guys would give um, your Sunday morning service, I mean, talk to us from your home, invite us into your home, the people who did communion and other exhortations, you know, that, that was like... I felt like the family. It was, I know it was, had to be so much work and so many people that were not aware of that were involved in that, but that was so comforting me. And I, I know that I speak for everybody here. 
So thank you for that. I love your per perspective, Sis, as a single person, as somebody that's retired, somebody that lives in Indiana, and even looking at our different personalities and how you know our different personalities can give us a whole different perspective of a pandemic or, or the way that God has shaped and designed us is, is the way that we you know, go through these difficult circumstances. So you've brought some really good points out. I just want to ask you one more quick question, and then we'll let Luke come up. We've been talking about the Sermon on the Mount, and Luke's been going through the Beatitudes. What's one of those Beatitudes that really stands out to you? Everybody guess. Peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, <laughs> for they shall be called sons of God. That's appropriate and very fitting. We love our peacemaker, Leanne Thomas. Thank you for sharing your heart. And I think many of you could probably identify with some of the things Leanne said in various ways. So thank you for being honest and vulnerable with us. We're happy to hear your story. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you for Leanne. Thank you for her vulnerability, for her honesty. Thank you for the ways that you got her through this season for, for praying in the spirit, for, for seeing things online, for, for being able to see love, helping her get through some of those tough times. Lord, we are all thankful for that. And Father, thank you that you were with her in the tough moments. Lord, thank you for the perspective she brought to us as a, as a peacemaker in that personality that she has. Thank you that she even showed us what it was like to be single in that in, in a pandemic. Father, I bless her, I honor her, and we are so thankful for her and her story. In Jesus' name, amen.